In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make amazing text effects using Adobe Firefly. In my last few videos, I've been looking at Adobe Firefly. What's Adobe Firefly? It's their version of how to create AI art, a bit like DALI 2, a bit like Mid Journey, only the user face is so, so user friendly. It's really fun. In the first video, I looked into what Adobe Firefly was. In the second video, we looked at text to image generation. And today's video, today's video is a lot of fun also, because we're looking at text effects, how to make amazing text effects. It's going to blow your mind. So let's get into it. Here we are in Adobe Firefly. As you can see, it's the beta version. It's not the full version. It still has limited access to some users. Thankfully, I got into Adobe Firefly a few weeks ago and you can see if we scroll down the page there's lots more common in painting extend image text to brush text to sketch so much stuff it's going to be unreal it's going to be brilliant it's very very exciting technology but today we're looking at text effects so here we are text effects and simply I just want to click generate and just like the previous video, we get lots of fantastic examples of text effects already generated by Adobe. It's hard to put into words just how amazing this is. Look at this one here. Just like text to image, if you roll over any picture, you get the prompt up here. Holographic snakeskin with small, shiny scales. What a mouthful to say. That took me like two or three times to get that. But look at it. Absolutely stunning and fantastic. Look at this one beside it. Wool yarn felt red, pink, orange, yellow amazing and there's there's so many look at this again flowers this here is cool pizza to do this in photoshop to do this in a Fendi photo would take an absolute age and i'm going to click into one of them there's a popcorn one there's a bread one what looks kind of cool oh this this here looks really good holographic dripping color so i'm going to try this prompt and it's given us firefly that's the text it's going to generate this here effect into i've sped that up it maybe took about 10 seconds or so to generate but look at it it's skin with me fantastic. It just looks like the preview. If we hover over this image, how would you rate this result? Thumbs up or thumbs down. Then we've got four options of slightly different, again, a bit like text to image. We've got four different options or four different styles. I like that one. I'm going to click on this one because this looks a bit more paint drippy. Is that a word? And that is so, so, so cool. We're going to cover all these things in a second, but if I just hit the back button, we go back and we can click into another example. And, and this here is really catching my eye. Colorful, shaggy fur, try prompt. And this time we've got a different font. It's going to try us in and we can change fonts in Adobe Firefly. And I sped that up maybe about 15 seconds that time. And it could be my internet connection or maybe there's a lot of people on this. I, I'm not quite sure the reasoning for that. And to try to generate that in Photoshop, Affinity Photo, I just wouldn't know where, where to begin. And again, there's different types here. We'll maybe click on this here because it's not quite, there's a bit of a curve there. It doesn't seem just as fixed. And that was much quicker. That was maybe only about 10 seconds or so. We're going to click back and go to one more. What will we go for? I think I've seen flowers that I really liked. Look at this. If you're talking about something, a Mother's Day card or something like that, this is amazing. And, and so many more options. Again, that was very quick to generate. Firefly with flowers. And let's have a look at the user interface now. We'll maybe start at the bottom. We've got the word Firefly. I can change that to any word I want. And I'm just simply going to type in creative. So as I type creative, it, auto it automatically generated. I didn't need to hit refresh or anything. And that's stunning. We'll click on maybe this here pattern. The details in these letters, the colors, the flowers, it's just absolutely incredible. There we go. That's what you get by typing flower lay. I don't know what that quite means. I'm not a gardener. I'm not in the flowers. If I want, this is where we can change this prompt to something in. So it's looking at flowers lay at the minute. And this, this will blow your mind. I've simply typed in chocolate syrup and whipped cream, comma, waffles. I'm excited. This might make me hungry. Hit generate. Look at that. That looks fantastic. My mouth's actually watering a wee bit just looking at that. I'm going to click on a different, maybe click on this one to see what it comes up with. That's incredible. I like that one even more. Chocolate syrup and whipped cream dash waffles. It's absolutely stunning. It's stunning. There's no other words to describe it. It's amazing. It's generated that in seconds. And to get that level of detail would take me hours and hours and hours and hours. And I still wouldn't be confident 
I could do it to that detail. So we're going to look up at the right hand side now and we'll come back and we'll generate more fun stuff. But at the top right hand side, there's sample effects. It gives us six. If we click view all, oh, there's 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 a decent number there. And we can just, we've done flowers or this is a different flower. So we'll, we'll click into this just to show you some of the different things. Again, we've still got creative down here and now it's given us our new prompt. Pink Hawaiian flowers and leaves realistic. And look at that. Brilliant. And snake. I think this is the snake scales. Yep. Holographic snake skin with small shiny scales. Let's see what it comes up with. That's incredible. Just the detail of that. So these are all under subheadings. We've got nature. We've got driftwood, tiger fur. We've got materials and textures. So maybe click down to some of these. Go to balloons. Pink gold balloon. Certainly a pink gold balloon. There's kind of weird things happening here. And on down this menu, we'll get to that. But that is like, it's like a metallic gold balloon that you would blow up for your, for birthday parties or for special events. Broken glass. Denim jeans. Oh, I'll have to click on some denim to see what it comes up with. And that, that is really cool. Gap. There's a Gap advert right there for that. Food and drink. Now, food is something Adobe Firefly does very, very well. So I'm expecting big things here. Orange. Oh, we'll click on orange. Tangerines and oranges. Here we go. Brilliant. I'm just noticing that the E's are being duplicated. And that's not a bad thing per se, but I'm just noticing that if you have this, if this, if you have the same letter, it's probably going to duplicate it. But if that was the case and you wanted something different or a different kind of E, you just click on, on another C down here, one of the other options, and then just copy and paste a different E into it. Yeah. And as you can see, you maybe picked that up before I did. E's are the same or letters are the same. We'll scroll on down. Donut. Have to click on donut straight away. It's a bit like the, my waffles example, but let's see what happens here. Fantastic. Really, really cool. Brilliant. And that's everything then. We've got food and drink, we've got materials, and we've got nature. And if I just hit back from sample effects, there's a few things we can do under text effects fits. And really what that means is kind of the border is taking the border and how tight do you want to get to the border? So at the minute we're in medium and you can see there's some kind of sprinkles happening over here and roundabout. If we're clicking tight, Tight will really reduce those sprinkles or maybe there'll be no sprinkles at all outside this font. And that's exactly just what's happened here. There's no sprinkles at all. Another nice thing to do is if you don't like this, you can hit refresh again and it's going to refresh. It's going to generate something completely new. That's just another way free tip for you there. But as you can see, there's no sprinkles outside. We've looked at medium. Now if we're clicking the loose, I don't even have to click generate, don't have to click refresh. It does it automatically. And I'm hoping for lots of sprinkles going outside the boundaries of our text font. And look at that, this here, there's quite a few sprinkles. There's a bit of topping coming over here. And that's really, really nice too. I wasn't expecting to like that just as much as I did, but that's really, really nice. If you want it tight, if you want to keep it just in the parameters of the text, hit tight. Medium, if you want a wee bit of overlap and loose, if you want to go a bit mad, and we'll maybe do that example with something else. Probably flowers would be a good example. I'll click into something that we haven't clicked into before. Let me have a look. We'll maybe go food again and we'll maybe see what happens. Pasta, pasta, that'll be interesting for this. And I can hit back. We've still got it on loose. And the pasta is going all over the place and that looks great. I, I'm not as fond. It, it doesn't look as good as the donuts with sprinkles. And I'll maybe make, we'll click on medium and tight just to see what it does here with pasta. And that's looking much better. There's just a little bit of pasta spilling out, but for something like this, I'd probably want to click on tight and really just make it to the font boundaries. Yeah, that's looking really, really good. That's looking really, really nice. I'm really happy with that. And again, at any time we've got our word creative, we can change that up or we can change this up. And I will do now, I'm just going to paste in rainbow colored unicorn hair. Here we go, generate and the sample effects doesn't matter because we've generated our own effect. We're keeping it tight and let's see what happens here. Whoa, rainbow colored unicorn hair is better than what I thought it would do. I absolutely love it. It's rainbow colored, it's unicorn hair, and it's actually got a unicorn's head or face up here. And that's, that's, that's just, that's just a bonus. That is fantastic. And it's actually braided down into the tea. That is stunning. And I might actually save that photo. Well, I haven't talked about saving, but up here, there's a few buttons. We'll click download. 
and that is downloading. And just like everything with Adobe Firefly, if you download that, the prompt you've used is the file name, which is really handy. If you forget the prompt, because Affinity Photo is not like DALI 2, doesn't save your generated artwork. It only saves it if you download it. And it'll add the generation or the prompts to the title of the file name, which is really, really good. And we'll click on options. We can submit it to the Firefly Gallery, and we'll click on that to see what happens. Submit to Firefly Gallery. Our team reviews all submissions before they are published. So it's not we're not submitting it to our Firefly Gallery. We're submitting it to Adobe, really, to have a look at. And then if added to the gallery, anyone can view it and remix it. And I'll, I'll not do that at the minute, but that is nice. If you come up with something absolutely stunning, you want the whole world to see or everyone that uses Adobe Firefly, there's a possibility that your work could be displayed somewhere. And then if we'll click back into it. We can copy it to clipboard or report if there's something we're not happy about it. So we'll scroll on down. There's different fonts. And because I love this so much, I'm going to skip the fonts for a second. And I'm going to go down to background color because I do want to save this as a transparent background. And if we click on background color, we can click the checkerboard and it will save it as a transparent background. And I'm just clicking that now. It saved it as a PNG. And that means that the background is all transparent and we can use that and it's brilliant. And I'm just going to bring up those two files now that I've just saved. There's the one with the nice slime green background, I suppose you'd call that. You can see it looks absolutely fantastic. We've got a watermark in the corner. I mean, it's not for commercial use. And at the minute, because it's not released to the public yet, it uh, we can't use any of these images in commercial work. But if I just zoom into that, you can kind of see the detail we're talking about really 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 nice really really nice and also common to adobe firefly is upscaling so if we wanted to upscale this even more and make it better resolution we could and where there we go there is our png and again we'll maybe just zoom in to the edges there to see that doesn't look too bad at all that's fantastic and we'll just zoom out and there's a few white bits here that we could maybe cut out manually. But to be able to use this YouTube thumbnails, I'm sure one of these are going to appear in my YouTube thumbnail. We'll go back to that. So that is color. We've got our background colors. We can change it to black and straight away it makes a change. Different colors. If it's me all day long, I'm doing a transparent background. So then I can take it into Affinity Photo or Photoshop if that's what you use. And go, go to town, do whatever, do gradients. And we can also click on text color and change the text color. And we'll click on the black to see what happens. And that's really, really interesting. It's, it's made it a lot more darker. And we'll, we'll maybe click red to see what happens. Probably make it a lot more redder, I would expect. A bit redder. We've got the eye cutting out here, but certainly it's looking a little redder. I think what we had it at the start, just like that, that looks much better just by applying no color. We've got the background and I'll maybe do another prompt to look at fonts. Game controller. This is the beauty of Adobe Firefly. You can come up with whatever you want. Hit generate. Gaming controller. Here we go. Wow. I think I say wow all the time with this. Uh, we'll click. That just looks brilliant. Really, really creative. <laughs> really creative. And of course, we could just change that to gaming. And I typed that real time and it's kept the A and it's kept the I because that's what creative was made up with. And it's generated that a, a lot quicker. And that looks great. That really, really, really looks. The uses for this is just, just mind blowing, just as much of your imagination. So we're going to click on view all fonts and we'll go to, we'll go to this one. As you can see, it's quite a thin font. And if I go back. Tight is probably going to work best here. It's keeping it true to the font. It actually turns the creation process on its head. I wasn't expecting to like that just as much. I think Adobe Firefly, it does work better when it's chunkier fonts. And we'll click on another font here. We'll go to view all. Let's see. This one here looks certainly a bit chunkier, a bit more squashed up. Might be nice for gaming. Yes, I like that. I like that. So creative. It's for the A here. It's actually put some kind of control device in. It hasn't just cut it out. I'll maybe do another effect. Old rusted spaceships in deep space. And for this, we'll maybe just change this to space. And as soon as I type in, oh, if I, if I could spell, that would be better, Andrew. Space. And it's automatically generating. And that's interesting. See, and I change that to space. Even though we've put in this prompt, it's just changing the text. So space, 
ship. It's going to change it to the word spaceship. It's not going to take in this new prompt. So if I want it to have the word spaceship, that looks very cool, by the way. I then need to hit generate to generate the new prompt. There you go. Didn't know that either. We're learning as we go. Again, double P's are coming up at the same time or in the same kind of font or the same effect. And that looks pretty cool. We'll change it to maybe this font here. Yeah, this definitely looks a wee bit more spacey. Brilliant. Maybe for something like this, I'll maybe just type in deep space. So again, we'll have to click generate and that looks super. We'll maybe uh, do a comma, stars, stars, and supernova. Supernova, when you're generating anything with AI art, supernova is normally quite a good prompt to give it because it has spectacular results. Spaceship looks cool. Maybe just we'll take away the ship bit. So we've got space automatically generates it. We'll put it back to this original font, which I really like this font. And you can't upload your own font. There's only a selection of fonts. I would imagine that will change at in time. But look at that text effects. It's a lot of fun. You spend all day on it. And today I might have, if I'm being honest, if you want to learn more about Adobe Firefly, please give this channel a like. I do specialize on a Findy photo on the iPad, but I'm looking into different AI art generation tools. I've looked at DALI too. I'm looking at Adobe Firefly. I might look at Mid Journey, but I'm also going to try to combine these tools together. I'm going to be taking some of the AI generated art into a Findy photo to combine both worlds together just to see what I can come up with and I think that's the really exciting thing about AI art. I don't look at it as a tool to completely replace what I'm currently doing or to replace artists. Now it might do both those things in some cases but I'm looking at this here and when I'm using Adobe Firefly, when I'm using DALI 2 and these other AI art generation tools I'm thinking how can I use this in my full-time job? How can I use it in my hobbies? There's so many ideas in my head at the minute of how I can use this tool. If you want to follow my journey on using AI art and using Affinity Photo and lots of other different apps on the iPad and maybe the computer, please subscribe. That would be great. And if you like this video, give it a like. I would appreciate that. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.